<laughs> they just wake up being pecked by a peacock. <laughs> oh, God, this next one is actually even more animal violence. All right, next one. This one, headline, Britain has spoken and chosen a vicious murdering bully as its national bird. <laughs> S- subhead, the robin is brutish, ruthless, and ready to rock. Could it be that over gentler contenders we have plumped for the bird that we deserve? He's talking about a fucking robin. What the? Are the robins over here like? No, uh, they're English robins. They're even smaller and fatter and cuter. They're like little Beatrix Potter dreams. In America, robins are like chickens and they'll fucking cut you. I, I mean, if your blood didn't clot, you would be afraid of anything with a beak. <laughs> That's probably why British sailors killed the dodo. They were just going around the world keeping British aristocrats safe from all birds. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this last one is uh, maybe a deep cut for me. Like, maybe you guys are aware of this guy. But for me, this is a deep cut, because I swear to God, I have kept these two articles and this character in my back pocket for probably three years now. I don't know why I've remembered this as much as I have, but I'm premiering them here for you tonight in London, England. This is a guy who coincidentally also writes for The Spectator, and he looks, like his actual face is more distorted and grotesque than the little caricatures that they use as like the sort of column heads. So here it goes, let's bring him up here. James Dellingpole. Another what? nude man! Why is he naked? Is it because the only light view people get is from a fucking camera flash bulb? This is a cheap way of inspiring a Beatlemania type reaction from the crowd. Seriously, what the fuck is going on with you people? Is the fucking national cuisine gas leak? <laughs> this picture of him there, and it, it, it looks like, like the British Wendigo. He looks like a mythical creature or something. And then this other one, I don't even... I, I don't I'm know just what really he... glad that Crazy Frog joined the army. <laughs> All right, l- let's... Let... <laughs> Is someone just yelling cunt at the stage? <laughs> okay, this, the first one is Delling Paul writing in the, spe- in the Spectator. Headline, Prince Bored Me Rigid. He's talking about the musician Prince. Prince Bored Me Rigid. I mean, again, British people, because you not just keep telling us how hard you get about corpses. Cunts? Welcome to Rift City. (laughs) (laughs) The weirdo, okay, subhead, the weirdo recluse pop genius was a girl's idea of what rock music ought to sound like. An act of debauched sexual communion. Yeah, that sucks. (laughs) That's terrible. So he goes on here to say... I saw Prince play once. I was bored rigid, but couldn't mention this to the girls I'd gone with. Gone with or followed? The girls I hovered over. (laughs) Smelled their hair. As far as they were concerned, watching the purple sex dwarf masturbating with and filleting his guitar and generally getting off on his sublime pixiness was like experiencing the second coming. Me, I could have done with a few more tunes. He couldn't give them a first coming. And he goes on to say, and yes, of course, Prince was very androgynous and bisexual and uh, gender fluid. At the time, I found this quite creepy and sinister and pervy. Well, it was, wasn't it? Prince was a lech who just oozed sex, which was fine if you fancied him, but less so otherwise. You're not allowed to say that anymore. And then Basically, he goes Basically, I think we figured out that he went to a Prince concert, Prince fucked the girl he was trying to fuck, and it's the most formative experience of his entire life. Well, again, he he compares Prince unfavorably in his sort of, like, androgynous gender fluidity to Led Zeppelin. Ah, You know, the the cool rock band. Led Led Zeppelin is so fucking alpha, taking all the parts from Lord of the Rings where they feed each other bread and sing songs to each other (laughs) and making it rock. Yeah, Robert Plant and his Shirley Templer, Temple curls. Robert Plant walked out there wearing a fucking alpha male blouse. <laughs> so, all right, that, that's the setup, 
is Delling Paul talking about how disgusted he was by all of uh, Prince's androgyny and the way he just sort of oozed sex and had a, a kind of like, you know, yeah, cross gender. The fact that he appealed to girls as a rock musician really disturbs him. That's the setup. Here's the, here's the punchline. Here's the follow through. James Delling Paul, again, different article, writing in The Spectator, headline I love that people assume I'm gay. <laughs> writing here, he says, at a birthday dinner over the weekend, I was introduced to this delightful party girl of a certain age whose diet for the evening consisted of chips and Grey Goose vodka on the rocks with lime. She launched straight into the praises of this marvelous gay couple she knew in the area who were mad keen on hunting, kept getting injured but didn't care, and who she was sure I'd get on with like a house on fire. They did indeed sound like my kind of people, but it was only later, after my new friend had had a few more, and she expressed, and she, that she expressed surprise at the existence of my wife across the table. Then she fast up. I had no idea you weren't gay. Those clothes, your manner, that gaunt look. <laughs> oh, I don't know, like, what this woman thinks a gay guy is. All right, she just how, many, his... how many slender men do you have in this country? We only got the fucking one. He goes here... I didn't mind, obviously. In fact, I totally love the idea that people still assume I'm gay after all these years <laughs> because it means I haven't totally lost my fashion edge. Girls will let me watch them change. <laughs> that, was, that was the original title of uh, Still Dre, Still Gay After All These Years. <laughs> <laughs> At home, I'm a terrible scruff, filthy jeans, T-shirt, but I do very much still like dressing up on occasion, be it the splendid rat catcher outfit that I got an excuse to wear out cubbing the other day. And you it's can't see, but like uh, the whole picture, he just has a bunch of feathers sticking out of his ass. And he goes, or the mauve Paul Smith trousers, floral Liberty shirt, and Emma Hope pony skin booties I wore the other day for a TV encounter with Vivian Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> he closes the paragraph by saying, once a fashion whore, always a fashion whore. Well, James, if you're selling, I'm buying. I'm sorry, and I mean no disrespect, but after hearing all of this, I have no idea why Jez is trying to save this place. <laughs> Frankly, you don't deserve him. You know, we, you know, we just spent a few days in Berlin, and uh, it seems to me that Jez could apply for asylum there, and, you know, he could get a flat for 200 euros, which he would still... Everyone still complains about the price of uh, fucking rent there, which is adorable to me, and get a fucking gorgeous place with 90-foot-high ceilings and a nice little garden in the back. He could, uh, you know, take his book of uh, manhole covers to Kit Kat Club and <laughs> show it to people on ecstasy, and everyone would have a great time. He could he have get, a wonderful he could, he rest could of his spin, life. He uh, could spin platters under the name DJ Tesco. Oh, adorable. <laughs> I... After my journey here and learning about your land, I wish I could go back in time and build a ship for Genghis Khan and give him a map to this fucking place. What's weird to me is all these people who are like, uh, oh, London's not London anymore, defend London. When it's like, you, you realize you, are just a mi you were just a minor imperial outpost of the Roman Empire. <laughs> I gotta say, though, to close out, though, I mean, like, I hope, I hope you guys are aware, like, how much better Jez is than fucking Bernie Sanders. Like, you guys, you guys are lucky. You guys, we'll you, no guys you guys are lucky. We will hear no shade on Bernie, but was, yes. No, you take good care of him, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. If you hurt him, we will come for you. I mean, he's no John Hickenlooper, but... <laughs> <laughs> Who is? Okay, London, England... Islington Assembly Hall. You guys have been awesome tonight. London, England, you guys kick ass. Thank you so much. We are Chapo Trap House. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Let's fucking go, Manchester. Uh, I was going to start out the show by saying, Manchester, it's really awesome to be here, uh, but we just saw a parade of nude cyclists. <laughs> we were just... It was incredibly upsetting. It was, it, it's also so cold. You're gonna get I thought the one in all your English folds. I, I thought the one redeeming feature of the English is they never got naked. What the fuck, I was well, lied to. It was kind of educational though. I saw a ginger pubic hair for the first time. Uh, you know, like the, I guess it was a misapprehension that uh, the English never are never nudes. 
Because what we realized researching British pundits is that they all, all nude. pose nude all the time. Yeah, they love getting naked. It's horrifying. There's that woman who keeps showing up to Parliament naked for the Remain vote or something. Yes. It's never the ones you want. Well, they, they get naked in a different way than us. Um, America is the country of taking your shirt off to signify that you're going to fight. But here, you have to keep it on because it's armor for a stabbing. <laughs> and then all the other times you get naked, it's a statement. So, like, if you're a columnist, it's like, I'm so crazy the clothes can't even contain my opinions. <laughs> uh, and if you're those guys, it's like, you know... It's, I like, it's very late 90s. It's like, oh, what would you do if you saw a naked guy that freak you out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so like I said, the, the, the other night we performed uh, in London, and uh, two of the people that we discussed were, and disgusted by, were uh, spectator columnists Toby Young and James Dellingpole. Okay? Yeah. No, yeah, we like them too. Oh, thank you, thank you for this, by the way. Um, but little did little did I know that on the very same night that we were performing in London, there was another political style comedy show taking place that very same night, attended by the very people we were talking about, Toby Young and James Dellingball. What? Would you believe? And we performed like idiots instead of going? Right. Yeah, I mean, Delling Pole... Ke- too. It's a competing event. We have this very similar audiences. Yeah, Delling Pole came out in the Eddie Murphy raw leather suit. <laughs> Toby Young would look really good in a Steve Harvey quadruple-breasted blazer. So this was, uh, you know, obviously, like, the political comedy we do is, you know, it's very safe... It's very sort of oriented towards feelings and, and being nice to people. We like to pull a lot of punches. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, we love sacred cows, too, honestly. Yeah, I mean, no, we, we, like, we like keeping them sacred. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's why they're fucking sacred, for Christ's sake. Leave them alone. But, you know... The, Bars, the, we're holding yeah. all of them. <laughs> but, you know, the, there's another comedy tradition that was, you know, on display at this competing event, and that was comedy that's... That's unsafe. What? You what? Know? Comedy. Wait a minute. That... Wait a minute. You're allowed to do that? 